Hi, Travis with Splunk here. This is my follow-on video for the customizing your pie charts and tables in Dashboard Studio Builder where I define what colors I want to match with certain keywords and then table going through and you know having the colors show instead of underneath one column to the other. I was asked by that same customer if I can do similar things in the classic simple XML dashboard. So I'm creating another video to show you can do that kind of customization. It's not exactly the same. There is some differences in even how to you know, edit the table, for example, to get that uh, range of colors. And that's where I'll go into recreating this dashboard here and showing you the differences and if you haven't watched the other video make sure to go watch that one and then in this video I'm actually going to show how to insert images into a simple XML dashboard the customer asked me that as well I mean it's not as easy as it would be in um, dashboard studio builder they made it really easy to add images in there but it's possible in the classic and I'll go into all the steps it takes to do that as well. So first thing first, let's jump into the documentation so you can know where to get more information. Which I've already got the uh, document pulled up here. So let me jump over to that tab. And this is the dashboard and visualization for classic. And you, you can tell when you look at our document, the, you know, here is chart, title, search, the way it's formatted because the simple XML and the way Dashboard Studio Builder is formatted is way different. But here's your general chart properties, which can apply to all of your charts. And there's settings in here, even like the, the background color for the chart. And that's why if I go back to this tab here, this is blue because I was playing with that setting. Um, but yeah, you can come through here and see, you know, charting field colors field dash styles. So, I mean, there's a lot of different options that you can, you know, play with when you're working with simple XML dashboards. Now, the GUI interface actually does not have an easy way. I have to go into the source code for a lot of this. And, the, and don't think I just know all of this out of the, you know, top of my head. I mean, I'm going out to Google when I'm trying to figure new things out or you know, somebody asks me a question and that's why I've been starting to create these videos, not only to help, you know, everybody else to learn what I know, but also so I can remember how I did something. And I, I've actually came back to these videos and referenced them and like, oh yeah, that's how I did that. So here uh, I actually went out to uh, Splunk Answers. And if you haven't been to Splunk Answers, that's a community of people answering, you know, asking questions about how can I do this in Splunk, and then other people coming in and answering those questions. And a lot of the questions that get answered on this site aren't really by the Splunk employees, it's the user group. And if you ever get a chance to go to splunks.comp that happens once a year, there's people that walk around with fezzes and capes. These are the people that are answering a lot of these questions and contributing back into the community and helping others out. So, so those are the people and they have a whole special event for getting new inductees into that group. And then the last document, and I'll make sure to have all these documents in the, uh, in the section below, is simple XML reference. And this is going to jump into how to do that HTML and bring in an image via uh, the HTML panel. So with that, let's jump back over to the dashboard. And what I'm gonna do is actually recreate this. You know, I could go in and show you the, the XML or you know, the source behind it, but I wanna recreate it so you can get that experience. So I'm gonna copy the title here. I'm going to go up here to dashboards and we're going to create a new dashboard. I'm going to give that title, but instead of edit, I'm going to put YT because it's the one I'm going to use for YouTube. I'm going to select classic dashboards. You can put a description, share it out if you'd like, and then I'm going to click create. Now from here, the first thing I'm going to do is add a time range picker. I, I, that's something I like to do. 
So click your add input time. I'm going to click the uh, crayon there. I always like calling it a crayon. And I'm going to say time one to represent time instead of having field. Because if you have field one, and it, you know, you can get a little messy. So I like to say time and then apply. So that's ready. Next, I'm going to copy the same search that I used in my dashboard studio video for pie chart stuff uh, in here. So we're going to add a panel. We're going to say new and find pie chart. I'm going to enter the search string in there. I'm going to give it a, a title. So firewall activity status. Yeah, sounds good. And make sure if you do set a time range picker to select that. So I'm going to say shared time picker and there's that time one and I'm going to add that to the dashboard. Now it may, you know, it may sit here a little bit and add, you know, wait for uh, your input, you know, easy, just click save and just refresh the, the dashboard and it should kick in. Once you, you know, maybe insert a submit button or let me click edit underneath the uh, time range picker. I should have uh, selected search on change and then click apply. So anytime I make a change here, it should update the search. You can see we have those basic colors, you know, pink and purple and maybe, uh, you know what, I'm going to zoom in. There we go. Now you should be able to see that. And hopefully, I didn't think about this till just now. I forgot to zoom in, but hopefully everything else was coming up okay to this point. But from now on, I'll keep it zoomed in. So here, I want to change these colors. You can, you know, you, know, you may have thought that I can come up here and format the visualization. Not really a lot there. You know, and here, this is for drill down. You know, I can change the visualization, but I can't define the colors. And that's where, you know, I, I have to jump up to the source code and go find this visualization. And you can see here, um, row panel chart. So there's my chart, there's my title, there's my query. I'm using that time range picker with time one and earliest and time one latest. And then I have my options. So charting dot chart pie and charting drill down, you know, none for now. And, and if you want to see where I got it, I mean, this person here actually put it out there. Option name charting. I, I first time I did this, I just copied this here and, and then pasted it in there. You know, we can do that if you want. Let's do that. And where am I going to paste it? Right underneath this one. And then I'm going to have to adjust the, the keywords here. So blocked. And then, what was it, active? No, allow. Was it allow or allowed? I think it was allowed. There we go, allowed. And then I don't need this one here because I only have two things that come up. If you have multiple, you can just start adding more. And then the colors, these are the exact same. Nope, they are different colors. Well, let's go find out. Let me click save and see what colors come up. Because now I'm curious. I could go out, oh, red and yellow. So the red works. I mean, I, I, that would work for me, but the yellow, I don't want yellow. So I'm going to click edit. I'm going to go find the code that I had for uh, green. There it is. And then I'm going to go back and edit this source and replace that with this. And then I can go back to the UI. You know, I don't have to save, but I, like I tell my kids, save often so you don't lose your work. So here, now we have that, you know, loud is green and blocked is red. I'm going to click save. And it is saved now. Next, we will use the same search that I did for the Dashboard Studio and add that same table. So add panel, new, we're going to do table here. Same thing. Let's see here. Firewall. Nope, nope, nope. 
This one is destination port usage. Yeah, that sounds good. And then for the time range, I'm going to select that shared time picker and add this to the dashboard. And once this comes up, we can grab a hold of this. You know, I had it up here beside the pie chart. You can decide where to leave it. You know, you don't have too many options, you know, above on the side or below. But to edit the the color and give that range for the count, you know, I can, you know, what you have to do is click the little paintbrush off to the right hand side of the word count. There is one for destination as well. So we'll start with count here, because if you click on the paintbrush up here to format the visualization, that option's not in here. You know, we can row numbers if you want that. You know, the click selection, data overlay. You know, we can put a heat map, but that does for both of them. Um, high and low values if you want to do, you know, high and low. But I'm going to, let's see here, take that back off because that's not really what I want here. Oh, rows per page and then summary. There's a lot of options in here. What I'm going to do is exit out of this. I'm going to click the paintbrush that's beside the word count here in the column. And I am going to select none and go to ranges. I'm going to adjust my values here. So zero to, let's say, 3000. And it'll give you an error message. Just make sure to you know, adjust all the other ones, but I'm going to have four here and yep, add, you know, I can add another range if I want, but if I, de you know, unselect that and come out here, you can see the ranges are changing, you know, depending on the count. I don't know of a way at this time to where I did it in the Dashboard Studio Builder. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more to where I can say, hey, instead of this lighting up, make this light up and then I have to look into and that's where I'll have to go back to the documentation see if it's there instead of the the background changing color maybe just the uh, text changing color but here you know if I need to I don't like that color and I want to make it more I don't want to make it two yellows but you know we can adjust the colors like that uh, if I want to do a number formatting you know we can do that as well what what that does is gives you little you know commas here so you can see that's 409,000 instead of just having you know straight numbers across then if i click on destination port and the little paintbrush by it this is where you know, i wanted to show the values so we can say automatic and it will automatically give you a, a different color i don't know if i would ever do this for this dashboard but it's probably useful somewhere else um, but here I'm going to define the cell value and say if I want to point out certain destination ports and they're getting used, I can do that. And just like that, I can highlight, you know, the 53. And if there's other ones like 22, you know, I could make sure that's red to catch your eye. Say, hey, this port's being used a lot, you know, which could help your team when you're looking at these dashboards. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and save again. We'll go up top here, click save, and then I'm going to click edit because I want to go in and show you, you know, the difference. But I don't, I didn't, did not, not, I did not show how to add an image in the uh, Dashboard Studio Builder. So let me actually, you know what I'm going to do? Let me, uh, I'm going to open up a new search here. I'm going to go here. Um, dashboards. Let's bring open a dashboard studio builder one. I'll do the one I did for the YouTube video that you may or may have not watched. I'm going to click edit here and then I want to add an image. Let's see. Let's add an image. I can go browse or I can go grab a image from my computer here. So if you're not seeing me actually go in and look for an image. Let me go to pictures and I will just drop. Let's now just do this one. Bam. You know, if I want to drop that image into here, I can. So down here, you know, boom, there's the image, right? So we'll stick with the Godzilla theme here and I can move this image around. So that's how you do it in Dashboard Studio. Real easy. But 
going back to classic simple XML, there's a little bit more involved. And it actually involves uploading the image to wherever your search header indexer is. So I'm gonna jump over to, I believe I have it pulled up here, where I can jump over to uh, terminal where I have my, I'm on my indexer, which is also my search head. You go to the app that you're building this dashboard in. So I'm building this in the search and reporting app. So I'll go to search. If this was a app that I built, like my OpenSense or my audit app, you know, I would put the image there. And if I do, and sh if I show you what's inside of this, um, there's the app server folder. Now, I'm going to jump back before I go too much further. Let me go back to uh, this screen here and go back to the documentation. So I'm in that HTML section. And if I scroll down and go to use an HTML file in the dashboard panel, it, it's got the spot where you need to go and place your image. So I don't have to, you know, you can watch the video because I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to follow where that was at, which was apps, my app, and then app server, and then static. So I'm going to go into that folder. And whatever image I want to use, which I do have Godzilla underscore blue. Yes, I am a huge Godzilla fan. I've got like all the Godzilla movies. I, you know, If I do travel, I actually have those on a tablet for me to watch. I don't know if I have them all in one tablet, but I'll, I'll switch them in and out. But back to Splunk. So here I already have the image. So I'll need to jump back out. So, you know, copy it in this location in your app. I'm going to jump back to Splunk Web and go to that dashboard. Now there is no, and if there is, I'm, I haven't found it yet. Just kind of like some of the options with the table. Uh, I, I, if I come in here and add panel, clone, new report, new, if I click new, there's no HTML. And I don't believe I'm missing it, but I don't see uh, just click this and insert HTML. So what you have to do is go out to the source and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Now, when you're reading the simple XML, like here is form. And if I go all the way to the bottom, here is form. I used to make notes behind uh, my modules here where I would say this input is to close out this you know time and then this row you know, I would put notes in here when I was first building these dashboards out just to help myself but then after a while I got used to you know okay this chart here is you know here is the chart and then here is the panel in panel and then here is the, the second panel on that row and if I look here is row and there's only one row right now so what I want is another row and I'm gonna put the image below that and I already have this typed out to save a little bit of time so I'm gonna say I'm gonna copy that and insert that below this row there we go and then and I already have HTML panel example then the HTML panel displays inline HTML and then image. And this is where you have to say static. And it's, it's a little bit confusing. Yes. So I'm saying go to app search and then static. Now don't be confused is if I go back to my, you know, indexer search head and I just did that in the wrong screen. Let me click on this green. Let me click on the right one. If I do a CD dot dot CD dot dot and do an LS here and list out all the, the directories, there's a static there. And I can go into this static. And I did this first where I had the image pasted in here, but it didn't work. It, it couldn't find it. So I had to make sure to follow. Let me go back to... Um, the documentation I went sure I made sure to follow this and maybe I'm got maybe I was supposed to specify it a different way yeah or here you go use an image file and dashboard panel same place you know app server static and then it says images here I didn't do that and yeah 
here is static app search. Oh, that's why. Because I didn't specify images, it's still looking in static. But not app search static. It would be, and I'm saying this again, CD app server static. So yeah, just make sure you are following the documentation. And if you did put the image in a folder called images, because if we look in here and you're not seeing that, let me jump back over. Sorry. I realized I was typing and I had it on the wrong screen, but here you can see, um, when I did an LS here in app server, there is no images folder. So I would have had to create an images folder there. And I didn't, so that's why I just dropped the file in there and didn't include the static images. So I'll back up, say it again, um, or do these commands again. Bam, bam. This has got a static. I didn't put the image there. I didn't create a folder that says images there. I backed up to app server, bam, and then static. And then, yeah, I put my image there. I could have did a make directory and created an image folder. And then when I went back to Splunk Web and I went back to the dashboard panel, I would have had to have the correct, you know, I would have had to have images here. I just talked a lot in circles. Hopefully I didn't confuse you all. If nothing else, this is, this is what it should look like inside of your dashboard. I am going to not click that. Oh yeah, there we go. I just went back and then here we go. My image is in there now. So if I go back and uh, source, oh, instead of hitting the back button, all I had to do is hit UI. Uh, sometimes I forget, but here, yeah. Once again, I added another row. Now, once I have this in here, if I want to drag this somewhere else, I mean, I can't right now. So I would literally have to go back into the source and copy this HTML section and maybe put it in a panel. So instead of row, I could have, you know, here, let's, let's rename this. Let's call this row here panel and see what happens. Panel. And it did not like that. Panel is not allowed here. Oh, that's because I have a a row right here. As I copied it below that, so I'm going to delete that. And actually, I don't even need. No, no, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna need that, and then I'm gonna put the row here. And now let's see all my exclamation points. You know, simple XML now will tell you if you're having problems. Back in the old advanced XML days, oh no, you would save and then you would go and refresh the dashboard and see if it worked. So here we go. We have, you know, the three panels. It's a little squished. I can now drag this. I couldn't before, or I don't believe I could before. Actually, I can't drag this out of here. There it goes. I don't think it was in there. I'm going to edit now and prove myself wrong. So I'm going to rename. So here we have row, row. Oh, it, it created it for me right there. So maybe I had something wrong. I had to go back and look at the video. But I didn't think I could drag it. But you should have been able to drag it. If I found another way of getting it fixed. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. And with that, I'll go back to my UI. I'm going to click Save. We have recreated the dashboard in this video for a simple XML. We have um, put some ranges in there to show you, hey, if it reaches this level, change it from you know, green to red and to match on keywords and change colors, whatever color you would like to use. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, you know, please leave your comments down below, questions down below, and happy spelunking.